Hi everyone. Welcome to the Fire Mountain Gems and Beads Jewelry Making Studios. I'm Rose and today we're talking about mixed media. It's very popular right now to mix up anything. Mix it up, shake it up, whatever you want to put together. Uh, rough with, with smooth, hard with soft, leather, silk, copper, chain, all of it. Put it all together. If you like the end result, it's fair game. There are no rules. Here's a couple of examples of some mixed media type things. This has got crystal, uh, faceted glass along with antique silver. I really like this one. It's uh, bone and acrylic and tassels and faceted glass. It's all fair game. If you like the end result, that's what's important. Uh, they tend more toward the sort of muted, sort of bohemian sort of colors, but not necessarily. Check that one out. Now today's project is going to be this bracelet here. So we've combined nice soft suede lace leather along with chain. Let's get started, here we go. I've got, I got a piece of chain. This is aluminum chain that's coated with black. It's super soft, so I only need about five inches and normally I would just take apart the links. I could cut them, but normally I just take them apart. But here's your first tip. If you go at it with this tool, chances are really good you're going to make surface mars on that chain because it's just so soft and these are so hard. So what I like to do instead for this kind of chain or this kind of material is uh, coat my tools with tool magic. Uh, it's a great way you just dip the tool, the end of the tool into the tool magic, let it hang up overnight while it dries. And then in the morning, you've got a coated tool that's not as likely to mar this stuff. So I'm gonna take my two tool magic coated tools. I'm going to twist open that link just like you would a jump ring and pull those apart. And by the way, if you should make a tool mark on this, my advice is get yourself a black permanent marker and just cover up that puppy. There we go. And there I've, ha I've made a link to the chain and not only that, because I didn't mar this link, I can close it up again and it's still a part of my chain that I can use for a future project. There we go, set that aside. Now I've already prepared some of this in advance. I've got here, a piece of chain I cut earlier, or I, I separated earlier, and I've already got my, my leather attached on one end and woven through super easy. It looks like it's something hard, but it's not at all hard. You just go down through a link. Make sure you can see that. Make sure you get your chain all nice and straight before you start going up and down though, because your chain will be all twisted up. Go down through a link, pull it through. Go up through the next link. Simple weaving. Keep your leather straight, keep your chain straight. Make it neat and tidy and beautiful. I know mixed media and it, everything goes, but I still like smooth and neat and tidy. <laughs> up through the next link. Making sure my leather is staying straight, not getting twisted or kinked. Down through the next link. And up through this link. Don't twist it. I thought I had it twisted for a minute. Up through that link. And down through this last link. Now here's another point to be aware of. I, I secured this on the bottom side. I want this one also to be secured on the bottom side. So you wanna have the right number of links so that both ends can both be on the bottom. So I just folded that over now. And what I did then was I took just an ordinary piece of needle and thread and I'm going to sew these down. Through and around again. I didn't actually sew through anything. I'm really just going around. And then I'm gonna tie this really tight. Just an ordinary old knot. If you're worried about it, you can also use um, 
some kind of glue like Freylock to also make sure it's secure. Make that super tight, tight as I can make it. And then if I've got a handy person around, I haven't put their finger there, but I don't have a handy person around to do that. I got handy people around, but they're not ready to put their finger on a knot for me. <laughs> so I have to be multi-dextrous. After all, it's multimedia. I should be multi-dextrous. Tie that a good double knot, nice and tight. And then pick up my needle again. And I go through this, you know, four or five times to make sure it's tight and secure. And it also looks nice because I sort of make a nice thick black band on there. And I want it to last for a long, long time. The thread I'm using is called Nymo. It's a nylon thread, but whatever thread you've got at home that's handy will work just fine. And I unstrung my needle, so that's, that's a good place to stop. Tie another knot. Tie a knot, I know, it's a challenge, you know, tying a knot. And again, I'm going to get multidextrous and put my finger in there to hold that while I tie the second knot. And you can get fancy and do surgeon's knots. I'm just doing, I think they call this a granny knot, just a knot. And now I am going to do a surgeon's knot. So if you don't know a surgeon's knot, there's an ordinary knot. Ordinary knot. Surgeon's knot is just loop that tail over one more time. So it goes twice around. That's a surgeon's knot. And pull that tight. Um, they're better at not coming untied later. So we have that. And I'm going to nip this off. Nymo is pretty tough stuff, so I find scissors aren't all that successful. I prefer to use a nipper or a, th a thread burner to nip off that excess. And I can also nip off this excess leather. And there we have one of our strands. Now, I want it a little bulkier than this, so I've added two more strands to it. Ta-da! Prepared in advance, because that's who I am. <laughs> and we're going to use these nice big heavy end bars on the ends. And I'm going to use these gunmetal jump rings. I've already pre-opened a few of them. These are gunmetal coated. They're much more sturdy. So I'm just going to use my ordinary tools and not worry too much about the tool marks on those. Attach each of these to my end bar, making sure I've got the right side up, the side I want up. And put on the middle one. And one more. Probably the hardest part about this bracelet is getting all three of these strands the exact same length. I know we use the same amount of leather and the same amount of chain, but for some reason, you know, maybe a link is a little bit longer than another link. Maybe you wove it a little tighter. Uh, there can be a number of reasons why they don't come out exactly the right length for you. So sometimes I'll use different size jump rings. Sometimes I'll attach the um, strands directly to the, the end bar without even using a jump ring. There's a lot of different ways you can manipulate this to make sure that all three strands are the same length. Notice I'm being very careful to get the pretty side of my chain of my of my leather up. So I not I'm making sure the top is not the one I've stitched on. See the stitching would be right there. And I'm kind of trying to hide the stitching by putting those on the underside. There we go. Now I've got the stitching side down on all the ends. Yeah. 
They're about the same length. They'll fit nicely over a wrist. And I want to make this a unisex bracelet so it's for both men and women. So anyone can wear it. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is add that great big black clasp. It is mixed media and it has that bohemian feel. So this big bulky clasp is just the right thing for that. And I like to use double jump rings just because I find them more secure. I hate it when my jewelry falls apart. And I think it's kind of decorative. Just um, a little more panache, a little more style. As long as the holes that you're attaching to are big enough to accommodate two jump rings. Why not? Put it in there. Voila, there's our clasp. And like I say, I like to make this so it'll accommodate multiple sizes. So I'm going to use these hammered jump rings to make um, what you'd call an extender chain. And again, I'll double jump ring just because I like to. I don't think it needs to be super strong because they're pretty strong jump rings anyway, but it looks nice. And of course you want your jewelry just to be a, a little bit different, a little bit better than the other guys. So that's a good thing. That little extra jump ring, I think, just that little bit of bonus. So we're getting down to the very tail end of this little project. Hope you enjoyed it. Do make sure you subscribe so you see all the great projects we come up with. Make sure you click in the link below for the email subscriptions because that's where you find out all the good stuff. So subscribe, like, share, comment. <laughs> I really want to know what you make. So thanks so much for joining me for this multimedia leather and chain bracelet. Happy beating. <laughs>